when you decided to get let's say Sabato for a living, yeah. how did that come about? It started in, in varsity, right? Um, I'd been studying and I'd discovered this thing called comic timing that apparently I had naturally. Yeah. And I'd also realized that every time I auditioned, you know, I'd go out and audition for TV stuff, right? And you'd be queuing with these beautiful skinny women. Like they couldn't act their way out of a box, but they'll get the job because they look fantastic. And I realized comedy was the one space where it's all about your talent above all else. I was like, I'm in there, let's do this thing. Now, you're, you come out of it and you've chosen comedy. And now you find yourself in a space where you see it as a male-dominated field. Because you've been very vocal about that, about women in comedy and, and what place they should have. Why is that important to you? Well, it's not so much that it's I've made it important. It's everybody who's interviewed me has made it important. Yeah. The starting point is always, you're in a male-dominated space, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Stand-up comedy is such a young industry, but it's so far ahead in terms of gender. Yes. You know, the fact that women have already started being recognized less than 10 years into, into the awards. A woman has already won yeah. the most prestigious award, the most coveted award of the night, which is Comic of the Year, which yeah. I won. Yes. And and this year, Celestine Julie was nominated in three categories, yeah. you know? And, and for me, that is huge. That is men going, this is not a boys club. This is you're good or you're not. Yes. And so it's important that women know that they, 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 those spaces exist where your gender is actually not a disability. You won an award as a comic. Yeah. You won an award as a writer. Yeah. And now you're in TV presenting. <laughs> <laughs> and I just see awards following you everywhere, you know. Um, speaking about that, the, the radio space, you, you picked it, you're in there now. Yeah. How is that any different, <laughs> you know? For me, it's... <laughs> really? I didn't realise the intimacy of radio. Mm. I really didn't. And, and I come from this. It's Even funny, because one this. would assume that radio is this. But radio is not that. Yeah. It's, it's this. So everything you do there gets perceived and it gets received as this, mm. but you need to present it because it really is an intimate space. So for me, it's probably one of the greatest things I've ever done for my career okay. is go into radio. I mean, like, I was going to check out my bag and start like midnight. Yeah. Yeah. We went straight into, into, into breakfast. Yeah. Did you feel any added pressure in your, now I need to know things? When it's in I the morning, did. I'm listening to you I before did. I go to work. What people don't see in the background is um, I started this conversation with Jacaranda a year before I was even on air. Mm. And I actually did a lot of training. I yeah. spent months going into the studio, learning the board, learning the ins and outs of radio, yeah. um, even doing trials, off-air trials. I would join different DJs already at the station. I'd keep joining them as a guest. Yeah. So I, I never for a second assumed that I know. Even when I step into a space that I'm used to being in, I never assume that I know. And radio, because I knew that I don't know. I was like, to me, you're gonna arm yourself with as much information and, and help as you can before you get in front of that mic. What I was never ready for was an actual audience.